Good morning. This is Reverend Pam Gagan from the Center for Spiritual This is the last in our series of the power of clarity. And one with everything. And there's the world offers just hundreds of options. You can be anything that you want to be, go anywhere, acquire any kind of experience, create abundance of good in your life and all lives, even no matter what age or stage you are in your life. But the wealth of choices, which are unprecedented in human history, also mean we have to have laser sharp focus and clarity in terms of our priority and choices. And so without even knowing who we are, how can we possibly know uh, what options we have and what makes us passionate? And we become so uh, in our unique, authentic soul, uh, uh, what we bring to this planet, uh, that unique quality that we bring, that only we can bring, that fingerprint of God that we bring with us as we, uh, as we uh, come into this lifetime, we can, make, we can become easily distracted and make decisions that take us off course. So we get overwhelmed by our options and we procrastinate, pro, procrastinate it's a new word, procrastinate, <laughs> uh, um, because we don't know what we actually want or need. So in that oneness, spiritual point of view uh, that we place in meditation, our attention and time become, go into the finite resources and figure out who we are in that blessed bliss place of what we came to bring and what we came to be. And so our focus helps us reveal once we become to know who we are and why we are here and what really makes our hearts sing, so to speak, where our passions lie, we can become more productive and move toward our ultimate joy. So the questions that we're asking most is, uh, what is it that we need to clarify? And what is it that we want at our deepest soul level? And how we can get there uh, now are these concrete steps. And so the first step is, uh, what do we want to accomplish? We, you can do these in any order you want. These are the three steps for clarity and revealing within us these three questions help us define uh, both the infinite and the finite uh, definition of our mission so uh, uh, one is if you want to save the world you know save yourself first then you have it's the old oxygen mask in the airplane where uh, if a plane's going down or there's an emergency you put your oxygen mask on first so you can save anybody else that's with you or on the plane. Same goes for everyday life. Save yourself. Do what's needed for you to be a stronger, bigger, better, badder, as I say. Uh, and then from there, take that energy out into the world. You want to feed the hungry? Then you start in your own home and then you go out into the world. And uh, I loved someone had a wonderful idea. They have a paper bag in their car. They have paper bags in their car uh, for the homeless. And each bag has just like a water and a food bar in it. But when, uh, when they come across someone, it's there. They can just hand it to them and they feel good about passing their good along. So both knowing who you are in that soul, what makes your passion sing, and then taking it out into the world means what will our legacy be? What do you want your legacy to be? It could be something very simple, you know? Um, uh, <laughs> it could be something very simple about uh, that she did the best she knew how or, or um, she saved millions of lives just by being who she was or he was or whatever. Uh, I always... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why I'm even sharing this with you. It just came to my mind, obviously, speaking about not being laser focused. And I, I worked with someone who said what they wanted on their, 
<laughs> what they wanted on their uh, gravestone was, I told you he was sick, <laughs> but we are not sick. We are whole, healthy, and complete. So what do you want to accomplish? And to accomplish that, what is it that you need to change so that you can leave the legacy uh, of what you are now in that higher vision being pulled towards? So having clarity on what we are creating and the impact we desire to leave behind us can be a powerful, powerful tool for making choices and directing our energy accordingly. Whether it is awakening to the depth and height of who we are, exploring both, both our inner and outer infinite spaces uh, that reveals that passion to us. Like I said, feeding the hungry, saving the environment. Whatever our passion reveals, um, what we love, when that happens, what things bring the most joy to our life, when we are clear about that, and one of the ways we are, have clarity is what do we love doing for a long time without getting tired? And so ideally, our passion, our mission, our goals are aligned with that soul that came to express in its own unique, wonderful way. And so when we understand our passion, then our relationships are, are get better. Our relationship especially with ourself gets better. And a huge part of our living a good life gets better. So we're going to go within now. And, and then I'll be giving you more tips. But let's just go for a moment within. Go into the great beyond within. Just breathing in with a God is, with all of the energy all around us surrounding us and breathing it in from that grounding from the from below the earth see that light that wonderful energetic life grounded tied to a tree almost and then breathing that energy up from the third dimension all the way up relaxing in just being empty in mind just being empty in the mind relaxing in and breathing in that energy up, up, up. Feel it coming up from the ground, through the feet, through the ankles, through the calves, through the knees, through the thighs. Just relaxing in, hearing my voice. Coming up through the root chakra and the lower back, the sit bone, the hips. Just relax in. Just be empty. Just be empty. And with a hand on heart, keep breathing that energy up. Up, up, up through the sacral chakra. Below the belly button, above the root chakra. Beautiful orange. Coming up to the solar plexus where we hold a lot of our energy. Having it surround the back and the front, relaxing in vertebrae by vertebrae in the stomach muscles and letting go of any tension in the stomach. And with a big ha out. And then a big breath in on the count of four. And a breath out. And moving on up to the heart chakra. Wonderful emerald green heart chakra. And see the lotus that is open there. It is so beautiful. And just breathing in with hand on heart still. Just being empty, but yet breathing in to that center and the open lotus. There may be someone sitting there, a Krishna, Buddha, Mohammed, angel. It's 
someone from the heaven world. Just there to support you, guide and provide you. And just relaxing and now have that energy going around the back, up the spine, vertebrae by vertebrae. Still breathing into the heart and out from the heart. For it is the passion of the heart working with the mind that brings the power of clarity. For love points the way and law makes the way possible because law, God, just is. Universal intelligence just is. It's our love and our awareness and our clarity that brings it to fruition into our lives. And now just relaxing the shoulders, letting them even drop and the head drop. And you even want to roll the shoulders back. And having that energy now come up to the throat. Relaxing the jaw now. Relaxing the third eye between the brows, coming and filling the crown chakra. Relaxing the crown, the mind, everything, and then having it shoot right out into the universe, into all of the universes, into the energy. And now fully grounded and fully connected. I'm going to go through these questions and just give you a moment and after this, if you have pen and paper, write down any answers to the questions or anything that comes up for you. Surrounded, fully protected. What do you want to accomplish today? and in this lifetime. Just let the answer come in the emptiness, which is the everythingness, the allness, and the great beyond within, the depth of the soul. So I can only share what came up for me just now. I want to be happy and peaceful no matter what. To know as our wonderful Reverend Betty Ann says, my life is unfolding perfectly no matter what. beyond the politics, beyond the any virus on the planet, the virus of joy and happiness, peace and ease, is who I want to be and what I want to project. And the second question, to have this happen, what do we need or want to change within ourselves?
And for me to achieve that happiness no matter what, it's giving up the ain't it awfuls. into the gratitude of thank you for it all, for building my spiritual muscle, my spiritual awareness, connecting me to my passion of the soul. And so the third question is, what will my legacy be? And so for me, what came up, and of course, these may change as we grow in, in our spiritual and build our spiritual muscle, but leaving a legacy of family, friends, people known and unknown, who are aware the divine appointment shared in this lifetime made them spiritually stronger, awake, aware, alert that we are immortal and in this nanosecond of time in eternity. That the compassion and the love Kindness exhibited for self and all. Our environment is good and very good. Stronger, more flexible, more compassionate. And again, ideally, our passion, mission, and goals are in alignment. But if they're not, we still have a good understanding for making it part of our daily life. Clearly understanding our relationship with 
not only the environment and everyone around it, but with all the people in our life. Are we satisfied with the direction that's headed? Do we want things to stay as they are, or do we want them to change? Or letting go? It's all part of living a good life. We can only gain that laser sharp focus of clarity in the reflective moments as we become more mindful of what makes our heart and our passion sing. So I invite you to take 10 minutes before you sleep and just go into meditation. Just before sleep time where there's more serenity, put you in that optimal space of revealing who you are at its deepest level. And as you leave, if there's any great ideas that you had during this meditation, write them down. And to paraphrase again the old Twilight Zone opening narration, in these meditative moments, you have the opportunity to travel into all the dimensions, not only of sight and sound, but of mind and heart. Take a journey into wondrous land whose boundaries are that of imagination. The next stop is joy, oneness, delight, and a life that is unfolding perfectly no matter what. And so as I leave here today listening to my voice, just be aware of your room. And as you begin this process, becoming clearer every day in every way, stronger and healthier, healthier every day in every way. Give yourself time to embody this concept that out of this oneness it may be slow it may come like an explosion of a higher vision this natural process is unfolding enlightening you into the oneness and into the cosmic consciousness that comes out with laser focus. To what your puzzle piece is in it all. So today, just today, I invite you to be willing to 
to tune into that higher frequency of who you are in the spiritual world. To feel connected. To understand that we're all connected and whatever we do to one, we do to all. Next week, as we come back into the body, next week I'm going to do meditations on soul calling. Some of the questions we're going to be exploring is, how do you know when you, who your soulmates are? The difference between twin flames and soulmates and how to know when you've met someone from your own soul group. And knowing that I am in your soul group <laughs> and you are in mine. Peace out. Namaste. Have a bliss, blessed day. I love each and every one of you. See you Sunday with Dr. Sue on our 1030 uh, Facebook uh, broadcast from our center. Mwah. God is, I am. It's the only way it can be. I love each and every one of you. Have a bliss, blessed day, as our wonderful Rev. Lynn says. See you uh, Sunday. <laughs>